Hi, everyone. Hello. Happy Monday, friends. What's up? We're here. We're, We're here. here. It always feels like forever since we've recorded. It really does. Like, my life, uh, so much of my life has unfolded in these last seven days. Me too. I've had a really good week, though. It's perfect weather. It's, like, freezing. I'm wearing shorts. Um, I hear that the cardinal signs in the um, like astrological signs will be ending a 15 year period of turmoil and strife. Uh, and I guess Whoa. that period where it's like the beginning of the ending of that starts like right now. So, so things are going to be so good for those four signs, which I am one of them. So what are the fingers signs? crossed? Is Aries one of them? Uh, I can't remember. I, I mean, Capricorn, Cancer. Someone, you know, someone, someone in the comments, help us knows. out. Someone's someone seen one this freaking TikTok, all that. Yeah. Stuff, so, I've been. Uh, I was mm. taking care of two enormous dogs all week because my cousin mm. was at a funeral, and um, yeah. So that, I was going like four times a day. He lives five minutes away, but it still kind of, still kind of cuts into your day. I couldn't really like focus on, you know. My stories. I only yeah. I only got through one season of Grey's this week, Joan, which okay. was season three. Um, okay, interesting. <laughs> it's really all I have to do other than like walking. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This week for me was just kind of like a you know I had a lot of things happening, but with work, etc. So yeah, your um your John Mom Holmes Holmes Instagram is so hilarious to me because it's so like it's the most random there's never an explanation as to why you. you're posting this picture of like a cactus and the horizon and then he'll just and then i think you posted that and then you wrote like throwback to nice weather or something <laughs> I, don't know. Random? I was just wondering what it had to do with, with you selling real estate <laughs> okay here's the thing it's not about it's not all about selling real estate. It's about selling yourself. Oh, okay? okay. So there has to be a like, I, I don't want it to be solely just posts about look at this house. Hey, here's a house I'm selling. Here's a house I just sold. Here's some clients. Also, not everyone wants their stuff online. So I can't post every piece of work that I'm doing. So, you know. Plus, it, I want it to look cute. I am also about aesthetics. I want some cute things happening. You should, uh, on your website, you should put a link to our podcast. Because, I mean, they'll definitely get to know um, you. So I'll tell you, I, I did have, I did post one post about the podcast when we very first started it. And then like two weeks later, I, I deleted it. Because I was like, you know what? You know, if people stumble upon it. Yeah. In relation to that, but I don't necessarily need like my my great aunt who follows my work Instagram, like being like, hmm, let me see what's what's John up to. Oh, oh I never cool taking yeah. hard text. Awesome. You should do those po those videos that you see on TikTok where like there's a real estate guy like showing off, um, like real estate in New York, and then like as he goes down the stairs, it's like click click click. Because it, it like speeds up the video. Here's the thing. Um, I, before I was doing real estate at all, I would not post on, on social media. I, in fact, I don't really like it. I, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty like, I'd rather keep myself private. And so I'd say where I'm at now is pretty good for where I was. <laughs> um, I don't yeah. see myself recording like video, video walkthroughs, but you never know. I mean, like I could. The, uh, many of those people are failed actors too, I'm sure. So. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> declare myself a failed actor, but you know, <laughs> you, I, I you was a teacher. Early. Okay, you know, I. Um, 
Yeah, no, I think yeah, I think most of my actor friends are now real estate people and they seem to all be doing oh. really well. So there you go. Um, let's get into some. Um, okay. So uh, shall we talk about like our, our, our little bit of business? Our housekeeping? Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> you How many of you have done? And I'm still like, I was actually thinking before this, I was like, oh yeah, what does she do for those bumper thing or those like little interstitial <laughs> things? And Sala Walloway, thank you. You got to be a little relatable to sell. So who yeah. doesn't want to look at a tree? All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of, if you are looking to buy or sell in the uh, Phoenix metro area, Call me up, baby. We should put that on a banner. All right, uh, John, Ooh. I'm going to click some banners here. Yay. All right. So um, if you are interested, we have our Patreon. It's on and popping over there. And guys, there's like already a bunch of episodes to listen to. If you want to listen to us talk, there we talk a little bit more about like personal, as though this isn't already us talking about our personal lives plenty. I'm sorry, Linda, but over there, we do talk a lot more about our, uh, you know, what's going on, you know, what's up. Amanda's going to tell the second part of a can uh, uh, weed store story this week. And yeah, y'all, you're going to want to subscribe to listen to that. So check it out on patreon.com slash pod in the city, because this week we're also, we cover. So in the first half of our episode, we do like a little mixer and then we're going to do um, Broad City and then... On our main Sex in the City, uh, Pod in the City, there's so many things going on. Um, Pod in the City podcast <laughs> for all y'all to listen to. We actually have a special guest. Can you put it back up there again so I yeah. remember? We're doing actually the finale of season one. Can you believe it? Season one, episode it. 12, Oh Come All Ye Faithful, with Jen from Real Housewives Real. Oh my God, Real. You nailed it. Real Housewives <laughs> recaps. I don't know why that's hard to wrap my mouth around. No, it is hard. It's hard Anyone else? Real yeah. Housewives recaps. And she doesn't even cover Housewives. It's just one of those things where, like, that oh. was, that's what she kind of got no, well known with the title of. And now she just, now she mostly talks about, like, the Royals and she's doing, like, insanely well. Well, mm -hmm. I can't wait. Um, and if you aren't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, try it. Uh, what's fun is I did go into our YouTube studio one night. I was just like, la di da. And I was looking at the analytics of like each video. And it's like, uh, how long do people watch? I don't remember what they call that, but it's like watchers. And it shows this start, like it starts and I know. within 30 seconds, huge drop off. And then it's like, but then it usually stays uh, pretty steady. It stays steady. Yeah. Like a lot of yeah. Videos. I think we're ranking about 28% of people continuing watching. So <laughs> I guess that's good. Yeah. Anyway, and then hit the like button. We love you. Little explanation we are posting the lives and a video. So if you see two separate things, feel free to watch them. We are trying to build up our watch hours, it all helps us. Uh, and get our subscribers. So uh, yeah. follow us on Insta because we have reminders of when our new episodes are dropping on there. And it's also a really easy place to message us too. We get lots of fun messages, especially about, we have a couple friends who are really um, active in messaging us things. And yeah. one gave some beautiful ASMR suggestions. So I can't yes. wait. And everyone needs, okay, so like this ASMR thing, this bit is like, listen, the amount of bits that we thought of that immediately got dumped after like the first episode, like we were going to rank every Sex in the City episode. Well, I think it lasted the first episode. That's too hard. Most of the, any of the bits that are like too ch difficult, like I can't remember enough just to like rank this, all this the This ASMR episodes. thing stuck and now I've just had to come huh. to the acceptance that this is, it's just going to be happening. So I've learned to embrace it. But the last one that he did, I think it was for our Golden Girls episode. Mm -hmm. um, On our page. The ASMR was so good. He did like a like Coke commercial, mm -hmm. like pouring like Diet Coke into ice. And it, mm -hmm. I was, I was so into it. It was, it sounded like the you 80s. Guys, I, that's where I like to go live out my little fantasies is like yeah. I, that's I, I definitely am, I come to Amanda and she's like okay what do you want to talk about I'm like well I'm gonna talk about my Barbies and I'm gonna do an ASMR moment and it's like the fuck <laughs> but luckily you guys love us um at least we hope so 
Um, really quickly, another thing for us, for our Pod in the City episode, we read at the end, we always read a, um, a embarrassing, humiliating, hilarious sex story. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, we'll see who's sending it, but we will always keep it anonymous and there is never any judgment and we've been able to relate to pretty much everyone. So send in your submission to patcpod at gmail.com. We it can need, be as crazy as possible. We need these. We need them. Mm-hmm. So please. It helps everyone else make it. Uh, and you know what? Everyone like, else feel better of themselves. Yeah, and, you know, <clears throat> you know, like it. And last thing, over on TRP, um, my podcast with Jody, Total Request Pod, for the month of April, we're doing um, 420 month. So if you guys want to go to our Facebook group, it's We Love to Hate TV. That's kind of also John's wow. surrogate Facebook group as well. Um, you can send in your favorite weeds. This isn't very special episode, weed episodes. This is like weed is fun in the episode. Mm. So go over to our Hi. Facebook group. It's a pinned thing, and you guys can vote until, I think, next week. So, And then speaking of which... Um, on 420, which is a Saturday, April 20th, we're going to do our, I think it's our fourth annual, it might be fifth annual, but at least fourth annual, 420 um, Spectacular. And um, my mouth is dry. And John is going to be there. Nick Kachanov will be there. Jody will be there. Uh, Erica will be there from Surreality Pod. Julie There's will be, be there. so many people, dude. I know. It's going to be a lot. Yeah, it is. but anyway, so, and uh, po- possibly a couple others, but anyway, so that should be fun. Join us, and it's going to be live, but you it'll be live on YouTube just like this, but it's going to be still behind a paywall, so you'll need to be on me and Jody's Patreon to get the link to watch it live. Part of that, too, is because of the uh, imbibing, isn't that what it's called? What do you mean? It's behind a paywall like that because we're going to be, like, enjoying ourselves the way that you do on 420. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, I don't I mean, need it's that legal, but still, I don't, I don't want anyone to Still, I don't, I don't want videos of me pounding shots anywhere. Like, that's <laughs> trashy. Yeah, so not the best. Um, anyway, so, yeah, that's that. Um, any other housekeeping you can think of? Um, so, with ASMR, just a little preview, I am going to work on a wood soup situation so if you want to do a little google asmr wood soup um sarah suggested it and i already was like way ahead of you babes because i watched this shit i've seen wood soup live people do wood soup live i saw that conversation happening and i was like oh that's interesting and then you were like oh yeah i love these and i was like oh that's a thing (laughs) this is like a whole other World. See, I so before this, I was like trying to like scroll through because Amanda's like, you know what I do? I I scroll through TikTok to like find things to talk about. I was scrolling through my TikTok and I'm like, none of this is pop culture or anything. It's like someone making clay beads, someone uh freaking like I don't know, uh, make doing. It, I was like, none of this is hot. Have you ever? I got on like a trend where I was watching um rock shaking for a while. Like just shaking a rock? No, it's like people like go out and like get rocks and then they like grind them in this like rock grinder for like oh, the... seven days and then they wash it off and then. Okay, they so I did that growing up. Um, that is, it's so cool. I can't. Yeah. It's so crazy how like beautiful rocks are. It's all like of them called are rock beautiful. tumbling. Rock tumbling. But I have Thank also you. seen TikToks where they go and they find geodes, which are those rocks that have like oh, the you, sparkly stuff inside. I'm a basic white bitch from Canada. You don't think I know what a half. geode is? Oh yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> have you seen the videos though where they find them and then they like use this thing and they like chop them in half and it's like. Oh no, I would like that though. That sounds. You probably will get it now on your. We're gonna do page, a TikTok so. section later. We're gonna end off the uh, end up. End oh, off I got stuff TikTok to say about. Stuff. Let me tell you guys, I got a strike. I got a strike on TikTok. And this is a thing. This is the second, trust me, I get my comments get reported constantly. You're awful. And I have to get I I appeal them always. Like and they get appealed constantly, but I've gotten two strikes and there is a similarity between these strikes and I'm going to tell you what it is. So please stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait. Ah. You think TikTok's actually good? I don't think I feel I feel like this bill that was passed. I mean, I just it's I not read passed. Like, it's they're they're trying to get it passed. But isn't it just that um they're not trying to cancel TikTok? They just need like within a certain amount of like months, it needs to be owned by an American company. The problem is like why would why is TikTok gonna sell 
TikTok to an American company. It's plenty popular outside of the United States. Yeah, and, and honestly, also, everyone could just get a VPN on their phone. Well, just from a VPN. I, I think that there's a lot of things where the government wants to overstep its bounds on people's freedoms to do things. Oh, weird. And, uh, you know, they want it to be a <laughs> oh, weird. It doesn't sound like them, yeah. <laughs> And so they kind of just want to take it away because they want ultimate control. I think that really what is happening is that TikTok is like allowing people to see a lot more information, connect with people a lot more than they ever did before. Um, you know, seeing about things happening on all sides of the, the world. Um, and I think that maybe the United States government doesn't really like that we're becoming more informed. I mean... Anyway, unfortunately. Womp, well, womp. let's let's pep things up a bit. With, <laughs> wait, did I have another hot topic? Oh, wait, we haven't done hot topics yet. That's it. That's all of our... Uh, well, that was our housekeeping, topic. y'all. It only took us 15 minutes. Oh, 16 minutes this time. Yippee! All right. Hello. Welcome to Hot Topics. And uh, today I just want to do a quick follow up. All happy. This is happy news now. I want to say first, I think it's like almost jarring how um, quickly people kind of have recovered from this Brown family thing. And now it's like it, how quickly everyone kind of returned to normal and just like want content back again. It's uh, oh, really Warming. Yeah. But anyway, me and Jody are doing Seeking Sister Wife over on Patreon. Like, I tell you, I don't, I mean, I'm, I always miss doing Sister Wives, but like, it's the same jokes. It's the, all the same hilarious jokes apply. And we're having like a lot of fun over there. So it's a nice little palate cleanser. Um, everyone go check it out. You do not need to watch the show, but you should at least watch the two couples because they're the two that we like, like. Anyway, um, Garrison, I'm sure everyone already knows this is old news, but the Shelter that he adopted his most recent kitty, Miss Miss Buttons, um, four days before he passed. Um, the shelter that he adopted that cat from, and I think one of his other cats too, um, it got so many donations. I think a week ago they had received 13,000 donations over the course of just like the weekend. Um, and I assume it's been a week now since then. I imagine that even more, like they probably doubled that. But they had, um, they had this kind of party like a uh like the 20th anniversary or something and um i think it's like this saturday and they're honoring um garrison they're like putting up a plaque and they're naming the whole cat adoption room like the in garrison's name so that's so beautiful that's yeah. one of the beautiful things that comes out of tragedy is people it it brings people together and it rallies people it it always almost always does you know yeah. it it puts you know, it, yeah, it, that's like um, it's a it's one really positive thing that like that nobody can snark on, and like I think he would be so. I would love if that was my legacy. That's what I was gonna say. It's beautiful that like he has that legacy now. You yeah, know? and and you, and he'd be happy with like because he loved animals and it had nothing to do with politics or like mm -hmm. you know being a veteran or anything. It was just he liked animals and like he loved mm -hmm. cats and cool. So love that. Um, <clears throat> this other thing, this is so random, but um, I think I have a picture of at least like the article possibly. Here it is. So let's y'all know <laughs> that we uh, have a long <laughs> tortured relationship with Godspell. Yeah. If you didn't know. Please go listen back to something. I, lots of things uh, we've done. Um, we did a, a faded production of Godspell, which is where we like kind of, that's not where we met, but where we. Just ending it there, but. <laughs> <laughs> that was me and John carrying some bitch around. Um, yeah. So, so we just have, you know, anything we, anytime we see anything about Godspell, it's like, it's on site, baby. And right it's here, my interest. right here, um, there's going to be a Godspell documentary about the legendary Toronto, original Toronto production, which I guess had Martin Short, 
Um, Victor Garber. Uh, Andrea what's Martin. Her name again? Andrea Martin. Gilda Radner um, was in it. Eugene Levy. Uh, Martin Short was in it. It was like a lot of the wow. SNL um, Second City SCTV people. Is not crazy? Like, yeah, Gilda Radner, Martin, Gilda Radner, and Martin Short like dated. I'm so upset. You know what? With all things SNL. So it I know probably it was actually then a good production of Godspell. Oh yeah. After that, no Godspell production probably has ever been good. I don't think it is. Gilda but. Radner is the exact person that should be in Godspell. Like, I'm that, gonna tell you, she could make um, that work. Somehow. I had a week of theater this week, actually. So um, I saw three different live theater productions. Ooh, this, where this week? I saw MJ the Musical at Gamage Auditorium, oh. which is like the Michael Jackson musical. Now, I, I, had, that. I had slight trepidation, but the guy who played at Michael Jackson was amazing. Um, it was kind of boring, I'll say. Yeah. Then I also saw a show which I hope to never see again, and that is My Fair Lady. I have seen that now too many times. I always forget it's that it's three one. hours long, and it's boring. And, you and when you think you it's going to be have... over... Um, yeah, it's like not. Those. You could cut Alfie Doolittle out of the entire show, and nothing would happen. You nothing could also cut be. half of Henry Higgins's songs and everything, because his songs just go on and on and on, and it's like blah 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 blah. I don't even know the music enough, so sorry, some Gilbert or not Gilbert and Sullivan. Who does that? Learner um, and Low. Sorry, purists, but, um, <laughs> but when we did that at my high school, we like kept shit. everything and we didn't cut anything. Like we cut, we we kept the entire like Viennese waltz sequence that was like forty minutes at the top of Act Two. <laughs> like, um, well, so so long. I went to the production. Uh, it was a matinee. It started at like uh, three o'clock. Wasn't over until about three thirty. Uh, Wait, at, or no, said- six thirty. 30, okay. And yeah, then so. they had to do another show in an hour. And I was like, I would literally, if I had to spend six hours Ugh. of my day doing My Fair Lady, and it's, no one has a good part in that show. No one except her, I guess. And Henry Higgins. And uh, Pickering. I just can't. I cannot. I don't ever want to see it. Again. Yeah, that's I saw like, like an original play. That kind of that kind of show day is like depressing because you don't even have time to like go to like Red Robin or something and get like a cocktail. You literally you, you're bringing like a lean cuisine to the theater with you and like warming up. That's the, the type of show that um, if I was going to be an ensemble member in that, I would just have to turn that down. It's so boring and bad and no one gets a good feature in it. Yeah, no, the ensemble is... It, I awesome. also think it's disgusting that she... He treats her like absolute utter garbage and shit. And then within 30 seconds, it's like, oh, okay. I know. I know. What the fuck? Anyway, let's get back to this Godspell thing, though. So they're going to do... Um... Oh, yeah. I thought we were kind of done with that. But it's a documentary, oh, right? No, well, I wanted to talk about... But the thing that the reason that I brought this up, but yeah, everyone should should watch that. I I mean, I'm I'm obsessed with all of that. But um, what 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 needs to be discussed more? I was saying to John, it, it's not discussed enough. And I'm sure I've talked about this on the podcast. The Godspell movie and the fact that there is wow. a sequence called All for the Best where um, the entire cast dance. And again, the song is like, and it's a creepy song already. And they're all, it ends with them But there's absolutely no reason that they need to be doing what they're doing at the end of this song. (laughs) And what, and it ends on a shot. Okay, so it takes place in the World Trade Center. And um, I read an interview with like Victor Garber where he's like, there was like no safety at all. He's like, we were all just so excited to like do, would you ever do that? If you pay, if you if I was getting paid a hundred million, I'm not movie, recollecting no how close to the edge they are, and it's like a slope downward. But dude. I would have been scared. I would have been really scared. I don't think I would have been able to do the performance, even they, if I wanted do, to. I would be scared. They're on the t- and also the World Trade Center is like just getting built, so there's all this like scaffolding. But they're on the very very top on the edge, and they're all like they're all like away from the edge, like facing the camera, and the edge is you but then it goes dun 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 and they all turn around and run to the very edge where there's a tiny little railing that's like waist high and then they all turn around so their backs are right against the railing and they do a whole like dance sequence facing away from the edge no fucking way i would do that no (laughs) no would you ever do that how much like honestly if you were getting paid all the money in the world i just i couldn't I'm so scared. I think if you gave me a million dollars, I would do it. You would do that for one single million dollars. Yeah. 
What that are they? Even last no the one died life. doing it. I'm gonna guess there's some forced perspective there's, work here, and I'm, there's okay. no way they're six inches from the edge. Because if you had me six inches from inches from the yeah, edge, how many I times wouldn't... I've watched that thing and like broken down every <laughs> camera shot? I can play it in my head right now, like, uh, like shot for shot. Speaking Wait, of, I want to know, Amanda. Yeah. What are we watching? <laughs> okay. We're watching a lot. Oh yeah, that's all. That's all I have for. And also, got I, love how I stuck the. Uh, the documentary of the 1975 original Toronto cast of, Bra of Godspell under our hot top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a cat, well, like, a cat mean, room was named after Garrison and there's going to be a doc. Y'all, we, I mean, I'm nearing 40. Amanda is already. That is a hot topic for me. I'm turning 41. We're musical days. theater, like nerds like I, I mean i saw three shows last week i mean geez that's a big week too <sighs> girl i hung out with some dogs and it was still like oh god i have to drive five minutes there and five minutes back god it really cuts into my day um let's let's see what so pick me choose me love me we were on the plane! <laughs> have some remorse. Have I some hear him. I think that I may be the voice of my generation. I am someone who is looking for love. Hey, it's Che Diaz. Next week, baby, you get to meet Che Diaz. Oh, I've already met Che Diaz, and I'm covering my drink already. All right. Okay. Um, what are we watching here? What are we watching, Amanda? Love is blind, baby. All right, let's start. So finally, this thing has wrapped up. Um, I, I'll say I didn't watch Love is Blind religiously, but it did pop up often on TikTok for I me. Yeah. And um, they really eviscerated Trevor, uh, it seems, on the reunion for his stupidity. Look at this sloppy piece of shit. Look at his girl. Pants. Someone sabotaged this man with this outfit. Something happened here. Or he these are the pants he owned before he lost weight. You can tell oh, with this man. Oh, they're definitely pre-weight loss pants for sure. You can tell with this man that he was a bigger boy. You, you can think? tell by the way his Yeah, you can tell by this the way his body is built now. He used to be like bigger and then he worked out and that's why it is. And so I think he's still probably learning how to dress his body. But let me tell you, sweetie, these pants, these <laughs> pants. Happened. They're all bunched because the-, the I have never, uh, uh, I literally, uh, I have seen like senior citizen, 90 year old men wearing better pants. Like yeah, what is happening sloppy. here? What has happened? You are on a reunion show for like a Netflix show. That the world's going to see and you wear that. Well, um, Vanessa oh. and Nick uh, were at, look, I, this is just, this is the perfect I, fucking picture of Vanessa. Just like, this is exactly the kind of girl she thinks she is. Like, I hate them. Zany. I can hang out with the boys. I can make quirky faces. They're Ugh. so annoying. Both of them. Yeah. Um, and you can tell that he can't, he hates her. But um, oh, she's always trying to be funny and she's not funny. And except this time she at least didn't ask each cast member when they're going to have a baby. When is they gonna well, it seems pretty baby? clear that like no one's really hitting it off on there. What do you mean? Uh, well, like none of the couples were really like. Oh yeah, the the people that actually this made it, was Johnny a dud, and Amy, kind of. Yeah, well, uh, Johnny and Amy, the 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 couple that made it, I honestly can say that I managed to skip ninety nine percent of their entire, and I don't I don't mean just of this reunion, the season. Like I really, mm. I can proudly say I've only seen about one percent of their stuff, and that's just before I like pause or but like press play and I get like the tail end of their story. I could not yeah. give a shit about them. Um but yeah Vanessa Lachey is Lachey is just as emasculating and annoying as ever. And at one point she's like, oh my God, Johnny and Amy, we were watching this in bed and I heard I you guys were getting married and I looked over and Nick he was sobbing, sobbing. Oh I just hit my elbow. Um, but and, and he was like uh, I don't, I'm like no he wasn't. 
No, he fucking wasn't, Vanessa. And it was she was just so emasculating, and you can tell he was like. Even then, like if he's sobbing at Love Is Blind, <laughs> oh, come on, there's bigger concerns. Yeah, he much was really, bigger. He, yeah. Anyway, but they hate each other. But um, we get we get a full. Oh my god, we got like a 20 minute full recap of all six seasons leading up to this because they had guests of honor at the reunion oh, and it was all I had the seen other couples. That. And like some of them I had forgotten about, of course. Um, mm-hmm. Gia Nina is there from like season one, I think. She's pregnant with some other guy's baby. So like, why are you there? You weren't one of the successful couples. But anyway, <laughs> Kelsey and Kwame are still together. Shocked. I, I'm, I've never been more shocked. Like they also, there was an energy of like, okay, we're, we're doing this because this is our business. Um, okay. They, Colleen and Matt are still together. Now, Colleen is a ballerina, and she is the origin of Jody saying, I know that I could do ball- ballet right now. Jody thinks oh, she could okay. do ballet like today and like look exactly like uh Colleen. Um, but anyway, that's where that's like where <laughs> that all came from. But Colleen and Matt, like that was a super toxic relationship. They're somehow still together. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So then we get on to the couples. Um, Jeremy and Sarah Ann are dating. Ooh, do you know about this? This is like the guy that like he left his he he shared his location with his fiance, and then he went to meet like the other girl that he rejected in the pod, Sarah Ann. And um, okay. he shared the location, but then he forgot he was wearing his Apple Watch, so the location like <laughs> tracked all the way to Sarah Ann's house. <laughs> and this bitch was just like watching it. It was hilarious. Um, anyway, they're dating now, and Sarah Ann comes on and she starts like yelling at everyone. And all she's like, uh, Vanessa's like, oh, do you have a good relationship with everyone? And she's like. Uh, well, the boys, I, I have, I'm like such good friends with all the boys. Like they're such sweeties, but like just none of the girls like me. And it's just like dumb. I'm like, okay. So that, that, uh, that's a major problem. You um, are, no, not that you don't have girlfriends, but like, no, if girl- you're a girl and girls don't <laughs> like you, that to me is, that's a you alarming. problem. Yeah. 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 Yes, but then she has the gall to start like yelling at all the other girls and telling Chelsea, that's the Megan Fox girl, she starts, she's like, you're just a pick me girl. You're just a pick me girl. And everyone's like, you're a pick me girl. She just was like, I'm friends with the guys, but girls don't like me. It's so dumb. But I like hanging out with guys all the time. She was like the ultimate pick me girl. I think what I'm starting to realize is the older and older I get, the shows like this, I feel more and more far removed like farther and farther removed from the people actually on it because I'm like, I guess that, yeah, like I would have said this dumb shit when I was 25 or whatever the fuck they are. But now I'm just so like disgusted and not, not disgusted, but like, just like, why? What? uh, Have you ever, I've never sat like in a room like I've definitely given like a fucking fantastic cold shoulder to like ice the whole room over and make everyone uncomfortable. But I've never sat in a room with like another girl or a group of people and just screamed back and forth with someone and then like called them names. I've never called someone like a name before. I will say (laughs) I've never called. Anyway, I did get into a fight uh, one time. The probably the biggest fight I got into was when I was teaching theater camp and one of the other theater camp like, I was gonna, I'm like, teachers, I better one of the other theater camp. Yeah. One of the other theater camp teachers um, thought that I just was dismissive of them and just didn't care about their opinion and yada, yada. Like, it was very much a... The kind of feedback I usually get from people once they get to know me. <laughs> here was, okay, if I'm being real here, I had done this shit for like years at this point. This person was brand new, didn't really know what they were talking about, and then wanted me to give them just as much. Over time, I've learned that when you go into a new job and there's people who have more experience than you, what you usually try to do is kind of shut the fuck up and, like, listen. Like, listen. It's not a competition. Like, yeah, just... Well, anyway, this bitch was just like, you're a pick me girl and you're a bitch. And you talk so much shit about me. I saw it on TV. I would like, love oh to gosh, do that. I, I dream uh, about fighting people, but. It anyway, here's the more. looks. What do you think about these? I think they're all pretty bad. I think the guys yeah. look okay. Except for the white yeah. suit. 
and the yeah, red out the money. red dress is bad actually both red dresses are yeah actually the only girl i think that looks good is up here in the right top right corner i don't know what in the in the red no other side oh like are her face is covered by the pod in the yeah though? okay yeah that's ad her dress looks normal yeah i think like some of them it's just like it's like where are you going you they look like they're going to different places yeah, but anyway, Trevor is backstage the whole time on a counter. It's like we got some surprises coming out, and then it shows Trevor like sitting backstage, and it's like twenty nine forty three twenty. Okay, and it's like okay. Now, when you look at those other people's outfits, his outfit is even crazier. Yeah, it's really dressed down. Like, did they say that like, hey, just this is a casual thing? You know, you'll only be seen waist up. Like I get that. No, they just they just they did they didn't all get the same memo, I think. But um oh thanks, Antique Krista. Um <laughs> anyway, oh that threw me and I'm I'm all flustered. Laura came oh yeah, Laura, Laura was really impressive. She came to play um Trevor. Yeah, so now Trevor comes out and here here's a perfect reason why I am aware that I should not be dating. It's not safe for me to date because he's Trevor's like, I, I just don't. And he was like all speechless and shit. And I was like, Oh, cause like, that's how easy it is for me to feel sorry for someone. I here's feel sorry my for thing you. is so I kind of, I kind of don't think what he did was like that terrible. Um, right. right? Like, okay. Well, yeah. Like join the club of every single guy that goes on the show, except for like, like it's one. not like he didn't even cheat on his girlfriend. She knew he was going. It didn't seemed she? like, it, yeah, it seemed like they were like together, but like she was more into him than he was into her. And she was just kind of, I think she was probably a pick me girl too. Like I'm chill with being just like friends. And then he was yeah. like, oh, I'm like, I fucking he's like, it. and then I'm going to go on love is blind. She's like, well, you know, our love I'm sure will be stronger than that. Yeah, no, I get, I get both sides of it. I've been both people, honestly. So whatever, it's not a big deal. But then he's like, can I leave? So he left. Um, on, I read something like with like contracts with tick on TikTok that if you if you don't show up at the finale, you have to like pay like a huge fine, like a hundred grand or something like that. Oh, okay. Or at the reunion, but someone still got out of it somehow. Anyway, so that's the Love Is Blind. Um, oh, then there was this whole thing about like this fucking conversation. No, nah, I don't even care about like how long these two people were talking in the pods. He's like, we, we were talking for like 10 minutes and then you stormed out. And she's like, no, it was like an hour and a half. And he's like, no, it was 10 minutes. And then you stormed out. And she's like, no, I was there. And like, and it was just whole argument that had nothing to do with anyone. Cause it wasn't even the one that the guy picked. And then they like showed the footage and she was right. It was actually an hour and a half. And so I was like, all right. Okay. So I'm glad I. I don't know if just nothing. like I I don't know if what what what's happening to me lately, but I maybe I'm on because of my healing journey in general, and I'm yeah. like on my journey to like my path to finding like you know inner peace. Um, mm -hmm. Reality TV ain't hitting the way it used to for me somehow. Like <laughs> as the kids say, like right. you know, I'm kind of just like so many things. I'm like. Okay, I don't give a fuck. I do not care. I don't care. And I, I can't uh, even pretend to want to care. But hey, watch out. Jump scare. Oh my God. It's time for some Vanderpump <laughs> rules. Ah, y'all. Ew. Y'all. Talk about a pick me girl. This bitch is a hairdresser. Let's get that going. Oh, Her job is as a crazy. hairdresser. <laughs> this is a hairdresser? Oh she does God. love baseball caps because... Here she oh, is God, I hate this with her so buddy, much. good old Spooky Joe. All right. Um, this week, Katie Maloney, she did the damn thing. And I'm sorry, she she ate Lala up. Um, speaking oh, of pick me. Really? Girl. I actually think that uh, this was the first time where I was like, oh, Katie, like you're the one that brought that up, though. She brought it up. Lala needs to shut the hell up because her oh, dumb ass married Gold Doug married some piece of shit who she already knew was a big piece of shit. Oh, are you and talking now about the last scene? I'm talking about the scene at the table where Katie's like, uh, let's talk about Tom Sandoval because he's dramatic. And then um, no, no, no. Shane I think is like, I don't they, want to talk about that. That they had to do. Yeah, okay. That sure. I feel like they had to do that conversation. It's later when they're having the the um chart reading. 
Yeah. And Lala's like, you just need to get over it. You just need to get over it. And then literally I saw a clip cut back to um, fucking uh, Lala talking after her and Randall broke up. And it's her being like, you know what? If people are going to be Randall's friends, they're out of my life. I don't care. It's as simple as that. I'm not doing it. They're out of my life. I'm done and whatever. And so now Lala wants to come back and be like, well, you know what? I'm enlightened now. I'm different now. Yeah, well, you yeah. all need to be di Shut the fuck up, Lala. You don't know what you're talking about. And you want to act hard? I could fight Lala. I could beat oh, her I could ass blow up. Her over. Come the fuck on. And she wants to act hard. Baby Katie will fuck your shit. Yeah, sober, right. sober Lala is pretty insufferable. Beyond. And like, it's oh. not because she's sober. No. It's because she just thinks that. But she, but being she's sober makes her feel better. She than is a else. hypocrite. Mm -hmm. End of story. And a loud one at that. She she isn't one undercover. She comes at you and acts like she's knows what's up. And um, I'm going to need her to shut the fuck up. Fat Lemons here says she looks like Robin break dancing. So I did just put this oh. into our overlay so you can. Okay, so there's this episode of Sister Wives. I think where... I might have seen a clip of it. Okay, I mean you probably have, okay. but um, on TikTok, where or something. the kids like the kids are like, we found this video of mom, and Robin's like 19 in this video. She she still looks like 31. Okay. She looks off, and she's like break dancing in her house, and it's like so cringy. And like you know that, and Robin's so excited that this is gonna be like shown on, on like on air, and it's like, bitch, you hey. thought the TLC was not gonna do you dirty with that because they showed no. this whole video, and it obviously became the most talked about thing. Like people still like always talk about it but here's a picture of this shit look at her oh she's my so, god she thinks she's what? so funny and like that's and that is exactly what um, um joe is like just like very Amanda, just i'm making funny faces if we're what? gonna talk about if i'm gonna go rant on a rant about hypocrites we need to think about ourselves and if tlc got handle oh on god. any footage of my shit the dumb shit I pretended to do or acted out on stage in front of crowds of people in junior high, high school. They would oh, make also, me look like, like the biggest if, piece of crap What if alive. social media was around like when we were all like hanging out in college, like 136? Um, I'm really glad. We would have it... definitely made our own TikTok page and thought we were so funny. And we would totally would have posted shit. All I just, the time. I actually think it would have been way different. And I think that we probably would have been people that are like, oh, fuck that. We're like, so like, we would have probably acted like we're exclusive, I feel. I don't know. That group dynamic, I think a couple people could have gotten us to do it. Okay, then I actually think it probably would have broken us up is what would have actually <laughs> happened. Because yeah, that's what that social media kind of does. Like, at, at nowadays, like, I am so glad I went to school when I did. I know. Seeing what kids have to do, like, deal with um, I know that sounds like such old man on my lawn, like, oh, these no, kids it's these days. Oh but, God, like, they have to deal with so much shit. And, like, the that's why they yeah it's just it, i'm glad i got to have a childhood is what i'll say like right to be a child all right but um but a uh, vpr um tom i love that oh first of all tom walks in and the assistant is there and she's like oh my god i'm on my way to the barbie movie i didn't mean for you to see me in my barbie outfit i was like oh my god you <laughs> who said tell. that the assistant, Tom, the assistant oh. Tom walks in. She's like, I'm about to go to the Barbie movie and you caught me in my pink outfit. I'm like, you're mic'd up, bitch. I think that, yeah. Anything having to do with Tom Sandoval, I am really not. I'm, I'm on the struggle bus with that. And Sheena. I need Sheena to shut the hell up. I need Tom Sandoval to shut the hell up. I, I basically, I think the show needs to be canceled. Sheena, 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 the victim with this Dancing with the Star thing is so funny. But and also, I just love that Tom, I think that Tom Sandoval ordered like some specialty ice cream, like Jenny's ice cream, like off Amazon. It's and salt of, and, it was salt and straw. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. They've done which you boys. would get at, like, in if you're in LA, he probably went to the, the salt and straw like location. Okay. But it, it almost seems like he ordered, he accidentally ordered like, 50 instead of five because he's he's like every every scene he's in in this episode he's like pawning off a uh, ice cream on people i he think it's because i think it's because he's sober now because he's sober right. now not i'm not making i'm not being speculative but i'm okay. struggling to see what does that have to do with the ice cream though 
Because because he can't. Because like normally that. he'd go to a place and be like, "Oh, I'll have a rosé or whatever." And now if he brings ice cream or if he brings cookies or if he whatever, he's like, "Oh, I'm sober." Yeah. That's that's a pattern on the Bravo shows. I, that's where I'm connecting this is if if someone is now sober, they're like, oh, I'll bring a tea. I'll bring whatever or I'll, we'll have this thing instead of, you know, like Lala would bring some kind of bullshit. And like make a whole thing of it. Mm -hmm. make it very, uh, well, because she's a business woman. OK, and she did it all herself. No help from her horrible, horrible, disgusting, you know, husband that she did not marry for his money at all. Anyway, well, I, I, I love that um, Schwartz, Schwartz plans this rat pack night. I'm like, and he wasn't okay. trying to act like it was his idea. He's like, so I was like watching YouTube and I was watching, you know, like rat pack stuff, you know? And so I was like, we should go on a rat pack night. Like, he wasn't even pretending. was to nuts to me because the way he sets it up is like, oh yeah, it's going to be like, you know, you're going to get dre all dressed up. Amazing. They walk into a restaurant that is like less, yeah, but it's less decorated than even like a cheesecake factory. It was, <laughs> it had no decorations. It was bright, brightly lit. No decor, no, no decor. Now here in Arizona, like in Phoenix, we have a restaurant called Durant's, which the Rat Pack literally did oh, go okay, to yeah. like it. And it's still around and it's like dark, moody, you know, like velvet. It's like a place that you would take like people or whatever. Okay. That was what I was expecting. So when they walk into this like generic Brazilian steakhouse thing, I was very much confused. So stupid. How Jay, this was like, a I'm in, rat I'm in man. I'm in man. I'm like, there's no way in any world that like there are four straight men that hang out together and that one of them is like, we should all like do like a rat pack theme like dinner. And they're all like, totally. No one has a problem um, with it. It's stupid, but they are on a real reality TV show. So, yeah. But anyway, that's. Oh, and then what are your the, thoughts on Brock? I feel like he stinks. Like I feel like he he doesn't. I feel like he smells like man bo, but like almost almost in an okay way. But like, I think it's he's air of bo. Generally terrible, kind of. But okay. the accent I, helps him get away with a lot. The body, mm -hmm. the accent. Baby, baby, he looks good on this show often. He wore heels to the um to some. He is short, event. I believe. They all wear yeah. heels. They all the, wear. Yeah, heels. yeah, I guess that is true. Um, is but true. hey, isn't this the make you face you make when uh your guy friend makes you laugh? God, she wants. Oh my God, she wants him. Like she, she is that she is a pick me girl. She's like, I'm totally cool with this. They've so. fucked though. They have fucked. I know, multiple but times. but she's trying to act like she's like totally fine with that being the relationship. She's and like a dirty deer. <laughs> <laughs> like just oh my god, the faces. Um, and then the other note I took is just um, when Tom. Tom's new thing is that he's worried about Raquel. He's like, I just want to like hear from her dude. Like, I just haven't like, I don't even know she's okay. And Lisa's like, Tom, I saw her at Easter. This this part was great. <laughs> she's like, I spoke to Raquel. He's like, you did. <laughs> And, then she's, and like, she's like, basically, she wants nothing to do with you, Tom. She, she wants well, absolutely happy, nothing Tom. to do with you. She wants to be happy. And she wasn't happy with you. You need to get over it. Yeah, and it's Tom's like, like Tom's, then Tom in the voiceover is like, I like I was trying to be like nice to her after the whole scandal thing, and then she was so mean to me. Like I had to agree with her over everything, or else she'd get mad at me. It like wasn't fair. And then um, uh, we're also Lisa, forgetting that she's like fifteen years younger than him. I know. And um, and then Lisa uh, goes, uh, Lisa goes. Uh, angry, well, she did tell me. me um that uh, she didn't like lying to everyone, and that you told that you Tom told her life is lying, and he's like, I did not see that. <laughs> it's just like perfect. I do like believe a hundred percent that he would say that that life is lying because he would talk about how yeah. how him and Ariana would talk about how they needed to do this and that whatever to do whatever for their image and yada yada. So yeah, mm. that's all I have for Vanderpump. I'm Anybody? thinking that Vanderpump is going to be canceled after this year, and they're going to transition uh, the cast a couple more. to the Valley. The new Valley show is premiering soon, and I know that it's going to. Are you going to watch that? 
Mm, probably not, because I've been struggling to even get through Vanderpump Rules. I fast forward. Today I watched The Real Housewives of Potomac. You know, I watch all The Real Housewives. I watch them all in the... the <laughs> Jennifer! Jennifer! <laughs> Him in his speedo and robe. I get it, but I I have a fantasy for big, beefy that's rugby more, I think that's daddies. That's more of a gay fantasy than it is for Exa- like exactly. Exactly. He is a, he is a gay he man's a gay fantasy, fantasy yeah. not a woman's. I get it, Jennifer. Like, I get it. You know what? I get it. Daddy. He looks yeah, like that. every gay porn. Yeah. Oh, totally. Is. Like he yeah. is a yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> where were we? Uh, well, that's it for Vanderpump. What were you? You had something. Oh, I. Uh, oh no, Vanderpump. I, I, I don't. I don't care. Well, um, <laughs> guys, it happened. It happened. Grey's Anatomy, um, oh, came back. I was ready. Season and twenty, y'all. Season, season twenty. 20. By the way, Meredith is still in the show. I thought there was a whole fucking thing about her leaving. Last, I think she, she was in every I, episode after that. I thought they were saying that she was going to only be in this episode or in the first episode. There's no way that's true. They started an entire new storyline this episode. Oh. Her thing okay. is that she like is she's like doing an Alzheimer's like study. And in the last episode, she just made this discovery through all of her studies that everything everything that has been done with Alzheimer's leading up till now was wrong and they have to start all the way back at square one like hundreds of years ago of research basically and um and so like now she has to do it in secret because now the foundation is like pissed at her because she's causing a pr nightmare so now she has to work in secret by exposing all the the secrets and anyway so is she gonna get sent to jail is someone no no just just catherine fox is gonna be mad at her and she has a brain tumor because everyone gets a brain tumor in the show. Oh Izzy Stevens has a stage four brain tumor, three months to live, fully recovers. Oh. Gina Davis. Uh, and well. then goes on to have a successful acting career outside of Grey's herself. Well, Let me tell, well, yeah, well, it's a little teaser there for a movie I have coming up. Um, hmm. Here's a, here's another plot line here. I feel like they were, you know how Grays likes to make um, statements on things? Like they, like all through COVID, they were making all these, okay. COVID is real. Um, okay. Like, but to this episode, it seems like they're making a statement against technology because the main storyline is that okay. um, two paramedics, or two, two doctors, two, okay, by the way, it comes back in all these new interns and stuff who've been there at least a year. And I, I just watched that whole season. Couldn't tell you the name of a single one of them. <laughs> barely recognize them. Like you n- all made zero impact on me. Okay. Anyway, they're back. Two of them are in this um, ambulance and this ambulance keeps getting rammed by this like out of control car. That is like a self, a self-driven oh, car. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> is like, like Wallace, like a self driving car has like car come is, r- is just ramming into an ambulance. That's important, huh? yeah. Over and like and it's locked all the doors, and like the guy inside, he's like, We're beta testing this new model. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> it was ah, so ah. funny. And like, and then the whole time, Chandra Wilson's making this comment, like, Technology, I trust people more than I trust technology. And I gotta then, be honest, people get in car accidents every day. I like, know this is just so it's crazy. Funny. It was so what silly. boomer wrote that? What that feels like oh, is this like whole show is boomer. Like some boomers. some person who's like very out of touch is like, you know what's the problem today? These self driving cars. You know yeah, what I think like more people on need the rise to be of AI. Yeah, people. for sure. I think it's a lot of like um a lot of um curmudgeonly writers that might might still be a little hurt over the writers strike and like because a lot of the writers writers strike and. Actor strike was about like not using, not letting AI. Did you know that? That was the main thing is that they're not, it's oh, now yeah, studios can't use AI. They don't want to so. also like you, part of it too was like using people's images, um, like taking someone's like a photo of my face and then like paying me a hundred dollars for it and then yeah. using it till the end of time to like put on other like CGI images. And Which you can like argue that. is basically what streaming services have done to everyone. That's like, um, it's fucked up. Yeah. I mean, 
if you see like residuals that these people are making, like Kamiko Glenn got famous for that because she posted her residuals for Orange is the oh. New Black and it's like $37 a month. Well, or 37 I think that cents a month. Doing um doing shows on streaming services, it seems like that's kind of like not that great. Yeah, no, no, it's they they do like a that. lot of crazy manipulative shit. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, that was, I think that was the main Grey's stuff. Teddy's obviously going to be fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. But I mean, obviously I'm still, yeah, she fainted last episode. And it was like, oh, what's going to happen to one of the main characters? Obviously she'll be fine because everyone's surviving brain tumors. She uh -huh. passed out because she like had like an infection or something. From an ear infection. Her ear infection passed down to her stomach and then she passed out. So wow. Wow. For being at a hospital, you know, they don't address, like, they didn't address, how, uh, anyway. I it was know. while she was doing surgery, obviously. Her ear infection slid into her butthole. Or a tooth, and... no, it was a tooth abscess. Very Aunt Diane. Anyway, oh, I'm going to be doing abscess, weekly yeah. recaps of Grey's, so get ready. You are? Up with a little... Yeah. What? Oh, What's you mean on commitment? here? On yeah, here. on here. Oh, oh no, oh, I'm oh. not adding more, more, I'm like, more into my geez, life. I'm like, jeez, lady. Jesus. Uh, no, but I'll, I'll make a little graphic for that. And, you know, I put in the effort for this. I put in the work. So you guys get to reap the benefit. Um, that's what I... Oh, yeah. So speaking of which, I watched 27 Dresses because I'm obsessed with Katherine Heigl. I love her so much. I think she... Um, I think history is going to look back on her cancellation as kind of probably like, oops, we kind of fucked that up. Well, she maybe was being uh, correct. Maybe she was oh, not that bad. Yeah, calling yeah. out some of the things. Um, the, the misogyny in Hollywood. Oh, what a what a difficult has, woman. She has a really good movie actually, where she plays like a crazy wife of someone, and I think it's called. Mm, it's not called Obsessed because I think that's the one with Beyonce and someone else. She plays this like crazy mother, this like very controlling mother who ends up um, like getting, she wears this huge, beautiful caftan and like runs through a house with a, a knife and is, burns in a oh. fire. Um, yeah, check it out. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> okay, well, we can't. <laughs> well, wait, what did you, did you tell us what the title of that was? I can't remember. Because you just described Let kind me of see. a plot line. Okay. Let me see here. This is Let a horror a little... movie? Um, It's like a, a thriller is what they'd call it. A thriller. Okay. Uh, well, you know, it's called... Wow. This, <laughs> this is pretty... It's pretty low on her. Oh, Unforgettable, y'all. Unforgettable. Oh. Uh, it's from right. 2017. It has Zoe Sel... Oh, no. Rosario Who's Dawson. It? Oh. She's in the Rent movie. Oh, Yeah. Um, I watched, I that, watched one. that recently. It's actually not as bad as you remember it. Oh dear! I think it was just woefully miscast the way that yeah, Dear Evan Hansen the movie was. As well. I actually like that movie. I, I heard anyway. a little upda update about our favorite Nepo baby. How he's going to be doing eighteen nights at the Palace Theater, which is famously done by like Judy Garland, I like know. iconic people, and he's going to. I, I think his I think his if you have a daddy who's a really producer movie. on Broadway, you can get whatever you want, I guess. Anyway, I watched it. Uh, I watched 27 Dresses and I really liked it. I thought this was a solid ass story. They don't make but, movies like that anymore, and no, they're just nice. Those are like comforting and like just nice to watch. The way it have you seen that? The way it ended, I, I was watched like, it. Then, back they, I mean, let me, I guess I'll spoil the ending, but it's that she's been a bridesmaid and like, mm -hmm. you know, wedding planner to 27 of her friends. And mm -hmm. she just kind of stays positive the whole movie. And the only unbelievable thing is that like James Marsden is constantly hitting on her the whole movie. And she's like, ew, get away from me. Like you would joke. And he was, he's also, Maybe. it also turns out that he's her famous, he's her favorite writer. Cause he's like, he writes for the newspaper and he's like, he writes wedding like recap and she doesn't know it's him she, you know because he goes by a pseudonym but then she does find it. and even after that she's not like ah uh, she's if like oh, james yeah. marsden came <laughs> within five feet of me it would be over for him <laughs> but he is so fine has been is now and will likely forever be oh I yeah. I reckon it's on Disney Plus. It was good, like it, and it moved. Like I was, I was constantly like in it. it did, there was no, mm -hmm. it wrap. But the way it wraps up is that she she gets married at the end, and as she walks up the aisle, like she's she's at the aisle, 
um, getting married. And then it pans out and all 27 of the people that she was, the, they, they're all there and they're all wearing these stupid dresses that they like made her wear. Like, uh, they, so like each woman had to wear like her own like uh -huh. stupid like dress. I was like, that was, that's, that's cute. A real nice button on now, the end of that thing. I will say I am able to suspend my disbelief, I believe is what they call it. Uh-huh. Who has 27 friends that would want them you and your their wedding? I've been in one wedding ever. I've been and I've in, been two, three weddings, I think, in my adult life. I think I've been in three weddings, and that's and that was me clinging. That was bare like barely. A couple other people yeah. like that. Barely making the cut, kind of, <laughs> yeah. on that shit. Well, the thing uh, with me is that most of my best friends lived in Canada or Arizona. And I, like, oh, I, could yeah. never, I could never, like, fly out. I was always, like, I don't know. I was, like, in Florida during Jenny's wedding. And it was, it was, it was a whole thing. It's a whole thing, well, okay? Amanda, thank you for that beautiful <laughs> introduction. <laughs> time for John's movie corner y'all so guess what this week I unfortunately was unable to go to the movies as many times as I wanted um you still went to two didn't you no one's my recommendation for the week ah uh, okay um the other so um I as I said I saw three pieces of live theater but the movie that I went and saw I went to this last night and it is called Love Lies Bleeding which I will say, I commend. Is that Kristen this Stewart. Scene. Yes, it oh, is Kristen, Kristen Stewart. Stewart. Yeah, I recognize her. Yeah, okay. It is like a queer bodybuilding thriller e thing. Um, here's how I feel. Uh, there were two moments. Okay, hmm, how do I say this? I thought it was all right. I don't think it was good. Um, I thought it was okay. I appreciate representation. There were two lines in it that sent me into the stratosphere and I gasped and like couldn't even believe it. And here you go. So Kristen Stewart is like with this, like getting with this girl who is like a bodybuilder. Okay. Kristen Stewart works at a gym that her dad owns and it's like a thriller too about murder and shit. Kristen Stewart is with this girl who's a bodybuilder, okay? They fucked multiple times. Yada, like, there's a lot of, like, sex scenes in it, okay? So, fine. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Fine. I think that's beautiful. In fact, gay love. Awesome. There's a time when the, the bodybuilder girl is, like, standing, leaning over the sink, okay? Kristen Stewart comes up behind her. She is smoking a cigarette, and the girl's like, I thought you quit. And then she, Kristen Stewart goes down to her knees, okay? behind the girl. I thought she was going to eat her ass at that point, but she didn't. Okay. So this happens just at like, this happens one scene after Kristen Stewart finds out that the girl that she's been fucking has been with men before. Okay. okay. So that's yeah. why this felt like a weird tie in. Kristen Stewart says to the girl, um, I just want to um, stretch you open. That's what okay. she says. Okay. And I'm like, oh, oh. Okay. that took my breath away, which, and now I've seen plenty of like, like crazy sh movies and stuff, but That's pretty I don't like, know that I've, I've been direct, even in a, uh, and it's not because it's two women. It's, I've never heard something like that probably in a, mo in a movie at a movie theater. Uh, I want to stretch you open. And then this is the next part. How many fingers do you use when you're fucking yourself? I you gasped. Do you think that that's like a weird thing to say? Why is that what you're, that, why is that in this movie? Why is that what their sex scene, a continued sex scene is her being like, I want to, I want to uh, stretch you open. How many fingers do you use when you fuck yourself? I feel like that would be like a normal question you might ask someone that you're like girl and girl. Uh, I would probably ask it more in like a scientific, like a casual discussion, like over brunch type thing, though, rather than like in the heat of the moment. I don't girl, think it's sexy, but I'd be interested to be like, oh, like how many fingers do you use? I just, <laughs> you're right. I'm not a lesbian, but like, I, trust me, I do. Now we're on YouTube live, so 
there's things that I've stretched open plenty before, but I've never said, hey, how many fingers do you use when you're stretching your asshole open, dude? I, I, like, okay. what? I think it's a little different. And then in a movie. Okay, I don't think- I gasped. Well, okay, well, I was shook and I wanted to bring yeah, that information back to y'all because right. I literally was like, I, right, I, I might watch the that. The color drained from my... It wasn't good. It was pretty okay. boring, actually. And, okay. like, kind of outlandishly I'll just find that scene stupid. online, like, bootleg and watch that. Where she's like, I want to stretch you open. Yeah, I'll watch that. Oh, girl. Um, um, okay, what else? Uh, you know what? So, I, I, still haven't, I still haven't talked about Mean Girls. Should I just move that to... Uh, oh, well, TV? let's... Okay, let's talk about that right now. Okay, well, I watched Mean Girls and... Because I've seen that, too. Okay, I loved I loved it. Also, I don't know the musical. And I was like, every song in here is really good. I don't know, like, I think I'm just out of the no. musical theater like community, but like I just stopped listening to new Broadway musical as musicals after Book of Mormon, and I just assumed they all suck. So I like Derek Manson. But every song in this was so good. And it, all the lines were funny. Everyone was really good. And the girl that played Katie, I I, I saw so much, like, everyone making fun of that part in Revenge Party. and You're... I no. thought, fine, what was wrong with her? She didn't have, like, an amazing voice, but it wasn't a bad voice. It was a very pleasant... Her face looked dead, and she looked dead behind the eyes, and she looked oh, confused in every scene. She didn't and... look engaged, and okay, I, I, I guess It was so bad. When... Because I, I was watching, I'm like, She's a Nepo baby. She... Don't forget. Yeah, I, well, yeah, of course. I think most of them are. Not Renee Rapp. Um, but uh, and neither she, is Karen. I thought Karen. I loved Karen, and I thought she was gorgeous. Oh, Karen's not a nepo baby, but she's like a child star. Oh, she, she was is. in that show, The New Normal, with Andrew Rannells. No, that's the other one. Oh yes, okay. That's Gretchen. Gretchen. Okay. Gretchen. I loved her. I thought she yeah, was oh, really good. She was great. The, everyone was great. Um, I, I really I, enjoyed it. I thought um, Ali e. Cravalho. Ali e. Cravalho. Who played oh, Janice? And Janice and uh, what's his name? Damien. They, I mean, hilarious. They were so the good. best part, actually. You know what? I was shocked that they took the line they took out. They took out the line, "Who here? Raise your hand if you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George." They like took that line out for some reason. I was like, Wait I wonder it. if that's in the stage version or if they took it out. But why? So many lines translated over. It seems like that's a pretty famous line. But anyway, they also took out the meet the meet the mean girls like the meet my the favorite plastics. Part. Meet the that plastics. I that think so was a that. mistake. But that's a common thing of movie musicals now is they remove like the good parts that people want to listen to. They made it all about Regina. They took out the other yeah. two girls' parts. And then because of that, you miss the part at the end when they're all singing together, which is some of my favorite musical theater yeah. moments is when there's different people singing different shit at the same time. Come on. That's the best. Yeah, I don't know. But other than that, I'm, I mean, everyone is pretty solid. I but I it. was I immediately was like, wow, that girl really looks like Jenna Fisher. And then right at the mm -hmm. beginning, she turns around and her mom is Jenna Fisher. And I was like, okay, Jenna Fisher clearly got cast in that because of like, it wasn't like they were like, we oh, need a think? Jenna Fisher type. We need the Jenna energy on set. They were clearly like, this girl looks like Jenna Fisher. I'm sure she's not doing anything. So call her up, get her in here. Well, she's on a podcast, Amanda. Yeah, I know. A really great podcast that I oh, love. It wins every... Doughboys always make fun of that, too. They're like, yeah, we put in all this work, and then Office Ladies wins the fucking potty. <laughs> oh, it won an award? It wins, like, all the time. And it's... I was so excited when that podcast first came out. And, like, me and Jody were like... Oh, Pomp. it's so bad. I well, mean, and that's coming from us. But... unlikable. Angela comes yeah. across fine, but, oh, my God, Jenna Fisher is just awful. Anyway, loved Mean Girls. All the songs were good. Um, Stupid with Love has been in my head all like week. Mm -hmm. And I even kind of like the weird version in the movie. It's very just like, like I could like, I could get a massage. I just think that that, that so girl stupid. was like an energy sucker from the movie. I and when you put her next so to some of the other ones, I'm like, ooh, she looks especially bad. Next what to Renee Rapp. Of, or... um, well, yeah. What did you think of the guy that played uh, the love interest? Not cute. 
Oh, I, I was the whole time I was thinking I'm like John would totally be into this guy because no. his lips are so like pillowy. Ew, I think I think he was not cute. One thing that is an epidemic now is trying to apply the popular like floppy hairstyle to every man. It doesn't work for yeah. every man, and this is a man it doesn't work on. Um, now, if you guys love musical theater, if you love iconicness, this is my movie recommendation of the week. Okay. And it is Connie and Carla. Now, I'm oh, not saying yeah. this movie is going to win any fucking awards, but Miss Tony Collette. Now, Nia, Var Nia Vardalos, if you've seen My Big Fat Greek Wedding, you know what you're <laughs> that, getting this into is the here. Um, Tony Collette is a national treasure. Tony movie. Collette, baby. This was my one of my first. I as um, Catherine Hahn. I feel like they're the same level of just like I, character I agree. actors that can do anything. If I see them in something, I'm I instantly want to yeah. watch it. Tony Collette edges out Catherine Hahn for me. Just Tony Collette's on another level here. And I'll yeah. tell you, Nia Vardalos is so lucky that she found Tony Collette because to play she of. makes them work. Like, okay, so basically the idea with this is like these are two women who uh, like love musical theater. They've been friends since they were kids. They want to like have their own two, what like two woman show basically. So they have a show that like they do it at an airport. Okay? okay, they do it in like a lounge at an airport. They end up witnessing a murder by okay. someone, and the like by a, the mob kind of like a mob boss. And the mob boss sees them and knows them, so they have to go on the run. And where they decide to go on the run is um, where is it? I think West Hollywood and they pose as drag queens. So the idea is like, then the whole movie, they're oh. pretending to be drag queens. Okay. They go audition to be drag queens at a, at a show and they like basically turn around. I did not around. know that that's what, what this movie was about. You and Ricky were constantly like begging me to watch this. I, I just don't feel like it. You have, okay. You have to be <laughs> able to, you have to be able to like suck it up through some moments that are okay, cringy, cringe. okay. very cringy like Jesus. like not like, wrong, like they know like, that's cringe or like mm, like the earnest. scenes with Nia Vardalos and her love interest is David Duchovny um oh sure the the scenes between the two of them are interesting but okay. <laughs> there is a there is a cameo towards the end of the movie that will shake you to your core okay where can I watch this? Uh, I actually don't know. Somewhere on streaming. Um, look it up on streaming, guys. Connie and Carla. Um, again, so yeah, then they pretend to be drag queens. They basically turn around this club and then, uh-oh, are they drag queens? Are they women pretending to be drag queens? What? All right. Well, maybe and this is them it's in not drag available to stream the... anywhere in Canada. I just looked. oh no, so I'm probably in the my my computer is <laughs> in Canada right now. Shit. I like my VPN's off, so I can't check US. But uh, let me see here, y'all, because yeah, y'all put it if you like something. um if you uh whatever if you're willing to watch this shit, do it. It says that it's on stars. Oh okay, I'm not getting a stars add on to watch Connie and Carla. Uh, Prime Video has it. Uh, no. You might have to rent it. Uh, no. Sorry, y'all. You guys watch it. Write it off. Oh my god! I got my taxes back. I owe ten thousand dollars. I've never owed more than like eight hundred bucks before. I was like, <laughs> like well, what? I'm like I'm gonna have to do. You're a supposed payment to be plan. saving throughout the year. I've like, never had to pay that kind of money before. And my mom's like, I told you you should be putting money away. I was like, oh, thousand bucks. They actually like, in, in the United States, they, like I mean, as a self-employed person, you you can do prepaid too. Like you well, pay. That's what the I'm year. doing now. And also, um, like a quarter or a third of that is because Canada forces you to have a pension plan because they oh. care about their citizens. Weird. Yeah, yeah but that's I'll good. That's actually I good. I was like, oh, I <laughs> have damn! Like I wish mine was in retirement now. Yeah, I wish mine was going to that. Mm. I know, right? I was like, I just didn't think that was a thing because they don't do that in the U.S. Anyway, can I open an, a Roth IRA? Um, uh, I will tell I you, you, that is. <laughs> you can't, like a Roth IRA is actually, you can put money into it that's already been taxed and they can't 
ever tax it at any point. So you can't, because I did talk to my guy about that. Yeah. You can put it into a SEP IRA, which is a Yeah. See, these IRA things seem like this is something like a savings account where I would have to go out of my way to deposit you, money. Every, I would need it to come out of my account without me even knowing everything. You can do, you that. do that. The yeah. only thing for me that sometimes when I'm putting money into mine is like, well, I can't touch this now for 20 years, basically. It's not like it's an account that I can just dip into when I need like some. Our numbers somehow went up during that conversation. I'm like, yeah! this is what you want to hear about? You want to talk uh, uh, Roth IRAs? It's tax season, baby. I guess that's true. I guess it's relevant, right? Okay. Um, is that it for... Oh, wait. You have another thing. Didn't you have another movie or was that it? Do I? No. That oh, that was it. it. All right. Well, let's get into our final section. TikTok, you don't stop. Section. TikTok, you don't stop. Right. Oh, all right. Well, okay. First, I didn't take a screenshot of this because we thought of it literally like as the countdown was like three, two, one. I'm like, we should talk about Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan Mulvaney has a new song out. Um, and and it goes like this. These are the days. These are the days. These are the days of girlhood. Which like, I want to be. Monday morning. Monday I roll out of bed. Tuesday morning. Grab my Grab mess. my mess. You know what? I think that. Last week, I talked about re representation. I believe it's 1,000% important. I think it's great. I still think that you can be an icon for a community and make shitty music. Sorry, the oh, song yeah. sucks. It's 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 not pleasant to listen to. And what it's I kind of really wish... It's catchy, though, and I hate that. It's so I, catchy. I kind of wish, though, that she would... Um, Something that tends to happen with singers who can sing high is they want to sing higher than they need to. And then their voice doesn't sound as good when they're trying to sing as high as they possibly can for everything. And so I think if if Dylan Mulvaney wanted to take a suggestion from some peon bitch who doesn't eat, who's nothing named me in Arizona, just sing a little bit lower and it would sound more pleasant. It just sounds so like... It sounds like it's at the top of what she can sing. And yeah, it's like, I, I'm it's, actually just really confused because it just sounds very basic. Like she has like an okay voice, but then I did look it up and yes, she was elder price in book of Mormon, like the tour. That's like a hard role. If she can sing those songs, like no song should sound better. I think, I think the difference though is what I kind of was just kind of getting at. I don't know how to skirt around it, but like you can sing, she could sing high as Elder Price. She's singing even higher. I guess and she yeah, probably could, sounded yeah. better when she was singing as Elder. Like maybe that's a better pocket for her voice. Okay, to yeah, sound better. It's just, I mean, but I just I think it's so funny how like but, people are getting really butthurt about it, and I'm like, I don't really think that she's trying to offend anyone. And yeah, it is like a oh, lot of people like, are getting upset about. People it? are saying like it's just like women, like um, it's a lot of just stereotypes of women. I'm like, yeah, here's what I'll I here's what I'll say crazy. as a person who has recently had a thing with my my whole Barbie collecting, et cetera, like having to do with gender and what that means and how it's portrayed. When you're young and if your idea, like it's okay that an idea of girlhood is putting on makeup, wearing dresses, and being pretty. He's I mean, they're not saying that that's like it. That's not the end all of what it means to be a girl. And yeah. that's their experience too. And I don't think this was that th that they were trying to make this like beautiful by Christina Aguilera. Like this music video is gonna like change people's lives and like really speak to the masses. I think she just wanted to do like a cute song about being a girl, and it's catchy and annoying. And I mean, I will still like say, I will still stick by my my feelings of last week that she's not as talented she's not as great as like they're putting her up to be like she doesn't need to perform at lincoln center she doesn't need to be at, on the tonys things like that did you watch not that uh, did you mean, watch that tiktok but... of her and drew barrymore doing that interview no i can't so i, I cannot watch you did not did you i don't I think, think you so. did they like tumble to the ground together on their knees like Whoa. that's my <laughs> I think like I think it's beautiful what Dylan Mulvaney has done. I would I wish that I could just I will say though that there is an interesting part of it that um she is thin and that helps white. A lot. That um helps. and so and already conventionally attractive, which also helps. I'm just gonna say there's a lot of people going through the 
transitioning uh, and the struggle that aren't getting launched Nash like on platforms all over the place. Um, you know? Yeah. I, I've been watching her since the very first day of being a girl. So like I was on this, I was committed to this. From, mm -hmm. like, I, I followed. A few follow yeah. I followed. Two. It was a very much a pandemic TikTok journey. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so there's that, but uh, what do you have for TikTok? I have a couple of things. <sighs> so you guys uh oh. recently on TikTok, um, oh, yes, I've been seeing a trend that just sparked this thing in me. And this trend that I've been seeing is, oh, what's going <laughs> Oh, that's, where the, that's what those are. I, I was too scared to click on either of those because I didn't label them. What is that? It was just the Mean Girls poster. Oh. With, oh my God, with screenshots at the bottom. I hope there's no like- Cut that. <laughs> is that mine? <laughs> no, you can see, it's like a screenshot. You can see like all the pictures down here. Yeah, I see that. That's not my phone, though, is it? This is my phone. <laughs> okay, good God. Oh my God, it's your phone. All right. This is what launched me, all right? This in this salad oh, yeah, bar in, in the it. fridge, okay? Perfectly fine if you want to make a fucking salad bar in your fridge. I don't give a fuck. In fact, great. I I wouldn't, I'd love someone to do this in my fridge. Now, I don't think it's getting used. I think this is a total waste of resources and everything, but I'm sure. The thing that is driving me insane about this is the idea that people have been doing these things forever. This, I, this guy's that, you know what? I've, for years, I've been putting a salad bar in my fridge. Or the people that, um, especially the people that tack on to a trend. So let's say someone presented this original video about this salad bar in a fridge. Then you see someone post exact the veggies would dry. Yeah, out I was fast. just gonna say it doesn't can make you any. Just leave vegetables out like that because I always have no. them in bags. No, you need lids on yeah, that stuff. Right. And how often are you eating salads? Once a day. I eat, you're not I eating really a salad eat, three really times a day. Meat, so I eat, I don't eat salad, but I use like, I utilize these things. But Fine, I don't but leave things you'd go build like yourself that. a little salad three times a day. My, 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 my fridge kind of has compartments like that. I, I could easily oh. do this just by shoving a couple things in there, but I kind of have my fridge laid out like that, but I'm, I'm also like ADD, but, uh, so yeah, I would never where... just take a zucchini and put it in my fridge, like without a, anything on it and just like have I, it sit out. Here's where I've. I think that I'm, I, I'm like, I can't imagine or like I'm getting more pissed off at inauthenticity. And there's so much of that on TikTok, of course, of people acting like, okay, they're now doing this trend in their house and they act like, um, I've been doing this now for years. I have done this myself for years. This ex this also comes down to like, okay, they they do like um some um uh like trends. Um so you're basically just steamed that you didn't think of this idea first. No, no, no. <laughs> I would never do this. I, I have containers in my fridge with food in them. I don't need a single one. First of all, my fridge is not bougie enough to have a special drawer one that i can pull out i don't know it then we actually think of the fact that you and me live alone and most people have at least one other person living with them so it's like double i get it if there's a family it. whatever <laughs> i get it but my prob my ultimate issue is not with the salad bar it is with the people who then copy the trend and make their video seem like they invented this idea or they came up with this idea or they're tick they're like um piggybacking on off of another trend and being like my family has been making these like this for years um and you like the person's obviously lying i think that's probably one of my issues is i just <laughs> you don't like a, inauthenticity i just want like, just be real. Why don't you start the video off by saying, oh, I saw it on TikTok that people were making salad bars in their fridge, so I'm going to. That's a really easy way to start your video instead of being like, for the last five years, I've been making a salad bar in my fridge for my kids every day. No, you fucking haven't. You have not. You haven't. I love parent TikTok. One of my favorite trends from like last year is when it'd be like a duet and it'd be one person like, here's what I put in my kid's lunch today. And then it's just like a woman like wearing a robe and she's like packing 
as she's like watching just this person perform, and, then, and then at the end she like puts a white climb <laughs> it's perfect uh, amazing trend okay here's some other really quick trends i just need to uh, list um that i that i currently am constantly seeing first of all i'm on roseanne tiktok and um the most okay if you are on roseanne tiktok um you are going to at least once a day get a scene of that episode where dan beats up jackie oh yeah when he friend. walks out the door Yes. Like takes his jacket I mean, off the hook and walks out. I could like say that scene, but I'll always sit and watch it though too. Cause I'll it's say so good. he Daddy. is my dream man. Yeah. <laughs> That's your fucking, and now it also I get a lot of the Connors, which is a, a not canon. It's the end just like that. Of Haven't you, movie. have you seen any of Roseanne's recent stand up specials? No. Are They're they quite good? alarming. They're alarming. Oh God, but like she used to be so. She little. has she has that. fallen down like the QAnon rabbit hole hardcore, and I, her her specials are like my pronouns are American, she, and it's like a lot girl, of girl, girl. I think maybe also though what happened is that she got canceled so hard by. Um, like the woke public that if I were her, I might turn against, I might go full Q on too. That's why she got turned against me. though, Amanda. Well, she was already doing that, but she took a Xanax though, John. That's why she got she turned against. They didn't just decide one day, oh, you know what? The woke mob, first of all, don't get me started. Don't even get me started. All right. Don't get. Look, I'm not saying that, she, that this is a good one, she, but I think some, there's something happened there because she used to be such a like, not maybe not a role model. That's the qu <laughs> something broke in her brain because yeah, she used to be happened. a person for the people. That I is know. what her how her show became popular was because people resonated with seeing a lower income family. She always had those blue and paper now she's towels. I'm like, where are you getting those? Like, you can't find blue paper towels anywhere. But it was always another thing. Another thing: horse hooves shaving. I'm really into that. Girl. Obviously, pimple popping and ear wet. Now, I like the horse hoof, sh horse hoof shaving as long as it doesn't have an abscess. I don't like when yeah, it squirts. Like, when it like sprays oh, shit I love everywhere. A squirt. No, I like when they just slight like do the slicing. Have you ever they seen them like shove a thing in like side this uh, in the side the side of like a cow just like right I, into I her, did see and then that. it just lets out like gas. I'm like it's that must crazy. feel so good for that cow. Yeah, but imagine getting your. I'm very much more as far as the the uh, satisfying things. I'm an ear cleaning video person. Oh, me too. Yeah, oh, I have baby. one of those. Oh, Jimmy I have one of the three. cameras too, and I have yeah. nothing in my. Nothing in my ear. Go figure. I also well, I really like um, ingrown toenail. Oh, I can't do that. Oh. And I can't do anything with like eyes. No, yeah, the, I ingrown, the ingrown toenails. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Because they cut it out of this like section. And then there's like all this extra stuff on your on there. And you're like, what is that? It's extra skin that like skin that your body is building up to protect you from this nail. Ooh. Oh. So it's like the nail and the skin. Oh, there's something about that. I well, you know how much I love chewing my fingers. I'm very into like like skin around the cuticles. Um, my other mm -hmm. do you, are you on the bees ASMR? But she's like, and that was another great day of saving the bees. No, <laughs> really? no, <laughs> I've never heard of that. It's like, girl, she's like, I went and I found the the queen bee and I put her in a clip so she was safe. And it was another great day of saving the bees. No. Um, okay. Well, simil great. similarly, though, I get this girl who's like pretending that um, people are uh, stopping into her like old timey like pub in like Shire times where she's like, oh, hello, traveler. Oh, it's been a long journey for you. Please sit down and have some food I've made. Like she's like a innkeeper at like a tavern in like. You've never seen that. See, it's no, so, that's what that's what's so interesting about TikTok is like, no, it's like, like why are they the feeding me this? Yeah. No, <laughs> it's like weird. Okay, but here's the, no. I just wanted to like get those because they've been on my list for like a while, and I just wanted to like say them. Also, kids getting cochlear implants and hearing their parents talk for the first time. Are you kidding me? And the glasses. Oh, glasses too. When they're like, Forget the kid it. doesn't want the glasses. They put the glasses on. And yeah, they and look at their like, parents, and they're like. <gasps> Oh, my God. oh God, I burst into tears every fucking time. Um, but here's my- I'll point. tell you, I'm going to need TikTok. I have here one more little TikTok complaint. I'm going to need TikTok. This latest trend is people doing a slideshow of their pets 
Okay. It starts off like I when got we you 22 years ago. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, so it's dead now. Okay, but the first like couple that I did, I didn't I was like, oh, that's cute. Oh, then they you made friends. Then they were everything. And and they'll be missed and then it's like they're ashes, which yeah, is hard because I mean, you guys know my dog passed away a couple weeks ago. I had to pick up I went and picked up her ashes like this week. Aww. And so I'm like, oh, fuck you, TikTok. Fuck you. You know what? I am in support of the TikTok ban after that. If you're going to show me dying animals, fuck you, TikTok. Yeah, I just ban don't it. Want to see any abused animals. Uh, I mean, Miss Peaches is already hard enough to watch. I mean, I'm fully, I've seen every Miss Peaches video. But I, I mean, saw one of her on a boat. I think it was today. Oh, she's got the best life ever. She's really cute. Like, that dog she is. is fucking cute. Uh, those types of dogs are very cute. Are those like? It's Pitbull. Just straight Pitbull? I think so. Yeah, she was in a hoarder situation. So that's fine. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that she probably, like, uh, was being bred. Uh, okay, but my big one, I have two this week. One, and one is hot off the presses. But the first one is, I've been following this guy's, for, I don't know, I guess they keep showing it to me because I do watch them through. But it's this guy that, like, the, the video starts with his hand scooping this whole thing. It looks like... um. It almost looks like a like a boob implant, just like a thing of saline, like sloshy. And okay. he picks up this thing of frog eggs, and there's like three million frog. Okay, and he like pours it in. Okay, so I'm following this fucking journey. He put picked up all these frog frog eggs. He has them in this like aquarium at his house, but like just a pretty basic one. And we've been watching them kind of grow. And he's like, yeah, pretty soon they're gonna grow legs, and we're gonna have you know five million full-grown frogs and i'm like what is your plan sir because this tank is already too big <laughs> and a lot of people are pissed i'm like this is gonna yeah. be like the end of fucking magnolia like why well, do you want this this isn't good to set all these frogs loose you're gonna somewhere. release those out like I where i think so but like who that's not i feel like that's gonna fuck up the entire ecosystem just that alone because people in the comments are like this is really irresponsible the well, reason that frogs lay so many eggs is because like the ecosystem they, knows that only a few are going to survive. So now you've saved all of these eggs. It's uh, going to ruin the entire world. Well, the ice caps are going to melt. If you've ever watched Jurassic Park, you know where this is going. Mm -hmm. So they need to No, Life finds a way, right? Life finds a way. Yeah. The problem is that, you know, I know some people don't believe in evolution, I guess, but you know, evolution is there for a reason. And that's why um, you don't, take the eggs from somewhere else, put them in a tank, and then like cross your fingers and hope for the best. I just don't know what his plan's going to be. How big are you going to let these things? Because Have you seen the like eel pit? Out. Have you the seen what? the eel, the guy with the eel pit under his no. house? Oh, Girl, that's my real question. What is the he fuck like is... growing them from babies? It's like in a basement, and it's like his basement has like an eel pit. Okay, that's... I, I, it is. What if you met the love of your life and he took you into his basement and he had like an eel pit? I feel like, I just don't know if I can, yeah. I just, that, I don't I know. I think before he'd be the love of my life, I would know that. I would. You'd get it. You'd get a sense. And I would be like, huh? Huh? Okay. Like, I think special interests are beautiful, actually. So trust me, I want someone who is accepting of me liking Broadway. So Broadway, yeah. eel pit. If I met a guy who like enjoyed watching Sister Wives, I would, I mean, I wouldn't let him move in with me or marry him, but I guess I'd date him. I think you would kind of, I think you should want someone who doesn't like Sister Wives. I want someone who like- Man liking Sister Wives? I want flag. someone who like doesn't like it, but will watch with me and like through watching it with me. Well, that should be anyone that it. would be with you. Yeah. Everyone should just want to be with the person so they can spend time together and watch no matter what. Ugh, sounds like a whole what lot. a beautiful uh, way to wrap things up here today, you guys. I had one more thing really oh, quickly. You <laughs> it was, okay, this is hot off the press. I found a new oh. game. Oh my God. Oh, it's so good. I've already pretty much caught up. But okay, during the pandemic, I got really into Lily's Garden. I spent like $300 a week on this game. Okay. I was just obsessed, which is good. I actually, it's good for my ADHD and it makes me not like eat all day long, everything in the fridge. But um, there's this game that I just saw somebody playing on TikTok and I looked it up and it's called, the official game is called A Little to the Left and it's just an organization game. I accidentally typed in, or the one that I downloaded was a, a, like an off-brand one called a bit to the left 
which mm-hmm. is better. The, the other one is bullshit. A bit to the left. There's like, there's one where you clean a car, you clean a rug like they do on TikTok. Like you, get oh. to stuff. you get to like move your finger around and like, and then you can like organize rooms mm-hmm. and um, you can organize closets and like they'll, they'll, they'll give you like this toolbox and then all these tools and you have to like figure out where each of them go in each compartment. I cleaned mm. a fridge. the I organized a fridge the other day. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's everything you could ever want in terms of organization. Would you like that type of thing? Do you like I play a, I want I do have one game on my phone that I play where it will give you like it'll like pop up a little item and then you have to put it on a shelf with other ones that are on like a big shelf. It's like yeah. you're taking one like doll and putting it with the two other dolls that look the same and then they just disipp- like kind of like yeah, a okay, kind of yeah. stacking. This one's more just like, ooh, like how do I organize mm-hmm. this and where does this fit? So, oh, wait. Oh, this is the wrong Aesthetic-y. thing. Aesthetic-y. Anyway, it's called a bit to the left. So if anyone is like uh, super ADD and like loves organizing shit, it, it, it's all the TikTok trends like carpet cleaning, fridge cleaning. Um, I, I think I, I think I repaired someone's liver the other day, but it, you know, Ooh. it's happening. Anyway, that's it. Um, let's wrap this up, Joan. Guys, if you haven't already and you've somehow made it here to an hour and 35 minutes and 17 seconds, what the fuck? Subscribe and then smash the like button, babies. Check out this week our broads or our Pod in the City podcast. Uh, we post our uh, Patreon on Wednesday. That's going to be Broad City. Season and that includes early four. release, early ad free releases of our main feed. So As I was just going to say, baby, oh. is if you are a part of our Patreon, you get our, our Pod in the City uh, episode uh, early too. Um, and this week we do have a special guest. So that's going to be exciting. Yeah, we got Jen from Real Housewives Recap. It's really hard to it say. It is I really to hard to say. Because you Housewives want to say Recap. Real House Rives. You do. Yeah, you know um, We are also putting our Pod in the City podcasts on YouTube. So you could watch a live video. You can watch a video of that too if you'd like. Please join our Instagram. It's P-A- at PATC Pod. Check out Amanda's. Uh, total request pod for the very special month and her love to hate TV sister wives season 10 episode. Is that what you're doing? Well, currently we're doing seeking sister wives, but we're getting back to sister. Oh, the that, second that so show starts to get bad, one, we're sorry. going back to sister wives. All right. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's about it, babies. That's about it. Walter. Sorry. Well, I was covering up Walter the whole time with my mic, but we're going to wrap it up. Walter. Oh God. Look at my eye. I like just I like rub my eye. I forgot mascara was. Like, I was gonna right. tell you that, but I couldn't tell if it was like messed up or not. Anyway, oh, whatever, it's over. I'm gonna. Bye guys. Bye guys.